deliver you from all your sins. From fire and strength of you in all goodness. And keep your life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stand to sing the glory and its justice.
calling to you. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife with no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers, the first married and died childless, then the second and the third married. And so, in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? The seven married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die any more, because they are like angels, not children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, most himself showed in the story about the book, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is the God not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all of them are alive. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Holy Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. isn't it? With the wonderful autumn colours around, the harvest gathered in, as winter knocks on the door, and we prepare to knuckle down. Already the clocks have been put back an hour. The amount of daylight is getting shorter. And that's not to mention the gusty winds. Chance to look back, have memories rekindled, reflect. In the church's year, we just celebrated all saints and all souls, and the remembrance someday next week. In a way, it's a season when we perhaps. Consider our own frailty, our mortality. Try and work out. Revisit, wrestle with the meaning of life. What is all about? The question that is there throughout the ages and has definitely engaged greater minds in the past and the present. I'm sure you'll agree that it's something that's fundamental, eternal, in our life's journey, in one way or another. And it isn't easy or comfortable necessarily to think about in these times when a bit like all the problems and sufferings that happened to Job, if you read the book in the Bible, and has been mentioned a number of times recently, there seems to be so much gloom and doom around in one form or another. I know one of my friends has said she really wants to say that 2022 is cancelled because she's had a number of bereavements and family illnesses. You all know the sort of thing that I mean. 
And it's easy to get caught up with it. Maybe even like the Sadducees wanting to vindicate themselves, justify their privileged position and way of life, of compromise with politics and power, and not accepting the issue of the resurrection and eternal life. Just the here and now. A very limited and restricted view of God, of life, you might say. We, though, are called to and do say in the creed. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Job says in the first reading this morning, despite all these troubles, and indeed there were many, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that the last, my eyes shall be told, and not another. Jesus, when asked the question by the Sadducees to try and trick, disbelieve him, responds that God is the God of the living. For him, all of them are alive. A message of hope, joy, love, the sovereignty of God. Something for us all to hold on to, cling to even, and let the truth of it, by the grace of God, be realised in our lives. Last week, Peter was saying that we're all called to be saints, home in one form or another. This time of year, in some Christian traditions, is known as the Kingdom season, when we celebrate and reflect on the reign of Christ in earth and heaven, giving us strength and hope during a time of year that can be tough, and is based on the promise throughout the ages of eternal life and resurrection, that God is creator and redeemer. And that it is for us, here and now, as it was in the past history, Jesus talks about life and resurrection in our Gospel reading today, eternal life. And as we reflect, try to work out what that means for us and in the world, let us trust in that truth for us on earth and heaven and for the future. Amen. Reflecting upon what Elizabeth has just said, it seems appropriate to use the full form of the Nicene Creed on page 26 and 27. We start. We believe in the one of God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
because of the multiplication, and all the one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us, the time of our salvation, he came down from heaven. For the time of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and the Holy Man. For our sake, he was crucified and not to smile. He suffered death and returned. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have to end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one and only Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for all the sins. sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now in union with Christ and the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. We thank you for your promise of life eternal, resurrection, joy, and hope. May our lives show and reflect some good news. Lord, in your mercy, Creator God, Living God, Lord of Love, we thank you for the wonder and beauty of your creation, reflection of your love. As we reflect on the effects of climate change and see the devastating results, we pray for the COP27 summit in Egypt. That people and nations may seek and agree and act on the way forward that brings life and hope to this situation. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Lord, for governments throughout the world, as there seems to be so much hatred and violence rather than peace and justice. In your love and compassion, bring your peace and reconciliation between people and nations. Your kingdom on earth. Lord, in your mercy, We pray, Lord, for our church, for a diocese here, a black man, as we see a new bishop and the meetings and interviews take place this week. For your guidance wisdom and discernment on all those involved. Lord, in your mercy, in 
in our weekly cycle of prayer. We pray for those who live in Washington Road and Poggin Drive. We pray for the work of our social committee. As they work to reset start St. Thomas's program of social activity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray too for peace in Ukraine and the Ukrainian Russian peoples, especially Ukrainian refugees who have found safe haven in our deanery and all those involved in supporting them at this time, and those opposing tyranny with Russia. We pray, Lord, for your peace. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate and loving God, We pray, particularly at this time, for those whose needs are on our heart. And need your hope, your trust, your peace, your healing. Particularly, we pray this week for Sue Green, Kevin Griffin. Holdsworth, Neville Myers, Molly Sharp, and Izzy, and any whose situation is laid on our hearts at this time. We bring them and those who we continue to pray for on our service trusting in your love and compassion and healing. Lord, in your mercy. We commend into God's keeping George Rose and Ian Robbins and all the departed. May they rest in your peace. We ask for your comfort and strength. All those who know the pain of bereavement at this time, may they know your loving arms surrounding them. Merciful Father, since the death of these hearts, for the sake of Please stop. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe from blameless in spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a suitable sign of peace. Peace.
Our offertory here is 684. 684.
who give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and with all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing in your praise. Thank you. 
Well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to talk a bit about money. I know we don't like talking about St. Thomas, about money at St. Thomas's, but it's just really about what the parish is doing with changing to a, a new giving scheme, which we're hoping people will register for. We've had, well, we've got problems. We've got nobody who does the gift day, so we've got nobody can, who can who is able to sort, sort out the gift day, so we've no gift day secretary. And then, of course, Barclays is now closed. So that means that banking the money is going to be increasingly difficult. Um, the Preston or Blackpool are, are the closest Barclays branches. Um, and looking at the way there's no banks left in London, I think you know, we can't go bank hopping because that's not really going to make any difference either. So the parish has now signed up to the parish giving scheme. We sort of, I know it's been a bit ad hoc, we haven't quite got things in the right order. But we're now signed up to the parish, parish giving scheme. That's something that the diocese are encouraging us all to join as parishes. Um, and what the parish giving scheme is, is it's funded by the diocese, so it doesn't cost us anything. But if we give, if instead of giving by standing order, or if you can do it instead of giving um, on the plate, if you can register with the parish giving scheme, um, then they will take it's paid by direct debit. So um, you can either opt to do monthly, quarterly, or I think annually. Um, and if the money is taken by direct debit, they take the money and then they pay it to us. If you're a taxpayer, then you can um, register for gift aid with them and they will claim the gift aid. And so instead of at the end of the year, we've got to plough through everything, not a few forward to that, to find out um, who has paid us at this gift aid and claim that back from the taxman every month towards the middle of the month. They would automatically claim that back and we will get that back. So it will simplify things for us quite a lot. So nobody has to give this way, but I would ask you all please to think carefully about whether you could change the standing order or putting your money in the plate um, to the parish giving scheme. There are two leaflets at the back. There's a, a leaflet with a big QR code thing on it there, um, and there's one that's got a form on it. You can actually join the scheme, you can either do it online, you can do it by phone, or you can do it by sending a, a, a full one. So, as I said, there's no obligation. You can still put in the plate, you will still get some envelopes if you really want to use an envelope. It's quite hard changing the way we give, isn't it? I, found, I used to like putting my money in the plate. Every week I used to like going and I'd put that in, and I, you know, it's like my gift. But then with COVID, we went to standing order, and I found that I've managed that, and it's not really affected sort of anything. So I would just ask, please, if you would think about it. Take away some leaflets, have a look at it. There'll be stuff in the magazine as well, but that's all. Thank you.